All right. So working on this refined painting, we're getting something that looks very much like a pastel um, treatment sketch. And we can keep moving on with these textures as we need to. And roughing them in before we kind of zoom in. And what I'm looking for now are areas that just feel too open, too all over the same. And sometimes I'll use something darker and then go in again with something lighter. But what I think I'm gonna, gonna do is modify the brush play with the brush a little bit because there does seem to be a bit of a lag happening. Now remember that you can always see your color in the foreground color box. because this brush is basically just a bunch of dispersed pixels, it can be hard to know what color you're selecting. So let's, let's look at this a little bit more closely. So if we zoom in and we view the pixels directly, You can see that they're nicely spread out, but they're little particulates. And so as you build it up, it's hard to know which color you're actually selecting from all of those. All right, so I'm going to save, and I'm going to uh, reset up Photoshop and maybe give myself a new brush for the final touch-ups, final pass. There's still probably quite a bit to do, and then of course I have to add a background. But, um, but I'm in the end stages now, which is where I want to be. And just to review, we have the gray base layer, we have base painting underneath that, we have the refined painting, and we have a sketch on top of everything that's helping to kind of frame it in. That's quite important. All right, I'm going to quit Photoshop. I shrunk both of those so they're a little bit smaller. Make sure there aren't any other programs running that I don't need. All right. Okay, so now when I open it up, I'm going to pick these three and arrange them the same way. And I think I'm going to customize my own brush. Let's see how quickly Photoshop can respond. This is also what I'm a little bit interested in. Though it's a little more moody than I want. 
I like some of the ideas just for the background. So that's something to keep in mind. So, so far I've done an acrylic painting. I've done a watercolor painting. And now I'm going for something more pastel. And I say acrylic instead of oil because there's some watercolor effects in that as well. All right, where did my others go? So I want to open up this one and this one. Put those into Photoshop as well. Okay. Now I go to my original and I say window, arrange, three up stacked. I'm particularly interested in this, in the way the background's handled, in the way the textures are handled. I think that has a lot to help inform me. In fact, I might play with compositing simply this background a little bit. And, and it might be worth it to see if I can find a larger example of that image. All right? And one way to do that is go to Google Images and actually just drag the image in. Just do a, what's called a reverse image search and then say all sizes. Yeah, it looks like the largest is this, which isn't large enough by any measure. But what if I look at, let's see, let's, let's take this out. Nope, all right. So, what if I look only for larger than, let's do eight megapixels. And see if there's a background I can composite. Because these are old enough they have slipped into the public domain, at least for creative purposes. Museums and, and private collectors own individual pieces. This is interesting. I was looking for textures to help augment. But what I love about this one is just the shape of it. So before I go too much further, let's play with these things a little bit. I'm going to take all three layers and maybe move it a little bit away from the edge. Maybe even shrink it down a little bit. That's going to automatically soften some of those granulated strokes because it's having to downsample all the pixels so it slightly softens them. And then let me take this such as it is, paste it in, transform it behind. See that shape it has. Love that. You can see the toned kind of butcher paper that he, he worked on. And you can see putting that behind gives it a little bit of energy and flair, but it just shows me kind of what I'm what I'm going for. In fact, I can even take a hunk of this. Part that I find most inspiring. The sketchiness, the 
the color, the bravado of it, duplicate that. Move it up above. Though I haven't done much compositing at all, <laughs> you know, kind of play with what those textures might look like as a finish. And then I can play with different layer styles. Let's see. They're all going to be probably too extreme. Well, that's not too bad. You know, that does some nice things. Kind of warming it up. And then, of course, I could erase away from it. Kind of blend it in. Nice soft eraser. So there's lots of ways to to play with that granulation, for lack of a better term, of the material. So you see how that gives it a little bit more of a depth. And that's soft light and a low opacity. Of, of scanned pastel. All right. So let me see what else might I do. I might take all of this section of that base painting to loose the track, bring that up above, stretch it, rotate it, warp it, which helps to soften it somewhat too. But remember, hard edges are my enemy here. And you see the directionality in that. That's what I'm hoping to get from a new brush. A sense of direction with each stroke. I'll put that over the top. I'm going to set it to soft light. All right. It makes it look like it's kind of smeared on everything. I'm going to move it underneath my sketch. I'll move this underneath my sketch too. Not that it should matter because it's in soft light. But I want to keep my sketch clear. Right. And then I can play with the opacity. and I can erase away edges. Now the internal hard edges I also want to take care of. And if I feel it's too light, So I'm not sure, actually, I kind of like it. Um, but there's some areas clearly where I'm going to play against it a little bit. All right, so we're getting a better texture build up there. And what's great now that I've isolated these these kind of soft textures, I can duplicate them, move them around, use them in different ways, like on the suit jacket. Stretch them more, 